Hey, it's Pete from MyJuryBench.com. Welcome back. And today I'm going to cover a quick tutorial on how to replace a missing or broken roller jewel on the roller table of your balance. Um, this is a common repair, especially if watches get dropped, which happens frequently. And sometimes uh, if they get overbanked, you can break the jewel. So we're going to go through the whole process of replacing this, and I'm going to explain to you how we do it. Um, there are several different ways of doing it, but I'm going to show you the old-fashioned way using some jewelers and watchmaker shellac, um, a replacement roller jewel, and the tools that you're going to need. So let's get started. Okay, so let's start with the tools we're going to need. We're going to be using our staking set. Now, if you don't have one of these, you're going to need this to do this project. Uh, the staking set is an invaluable tool for watchmaking. You're going to need a uh, roller table remover tool. There are several different versions. This is the particular version that I have, but there are uh, a few different versions of roller table removers. You're going to need a uh, roller table warmer. Um, this particular piece is just another version of what I have. And you're going to need a, an assortment or the correct size roller jewel for your particular roller table. So before we get started, I kind of wanted to do a breakdown of how this is done. So if you don't know the exact size of your pallet or your roller jewel, it's important that you match it to fit nicely within the confines of the pallet fork. It should not touch uh, either side. It should be loose enough to uh, just rock back and forth. And in most cases, if you can't find any technical information, um, you're just going to have to play. The next thing is to figure out how you're going to do this. You can actually put the jewel in first and then add the shellac and then melt the shellac, which you'll see later on in this video. Or you can use a little bit of shellac melted onto the roller table first and then insert your jewel from the opposite side. Um, for beginners, that'll probably work a little easier because then you have soft, warm shellac that'll hold the jewel in place and you don't have to worry about it falling out while you're working. In any case, when you're done, you should end up with a roller table that looks like this with the protruding jewel from one side and the uh, melted shellac on the opposite, which holds the jewel in place. Again, we're going to look at this from a different angle, and you can see there's the overbank pin on the pallet fork and how the jewel should look. You should have a little gap between the roller table and the pallet fork um, just to allow for free movement. The next step is to get the uh, roller table off of this. To do this, we actually have to disassemble the balance. I have to remove the hairspring. Um, and the, then we'll remove the roller table to get to that point. To remove the hairspring, you can use a hairspring remover tool or you can use a very sharp screwdriver. And what you're going to do is you're going to wedge it gently and try not to mangle your balance wheel because you're just going to use a sharp tool to get under that collet. Lift the collet up over the tip of the balance staff and the collet will fall out. And it works pretty well to do that. Take your hairspring, make sure it's safe and clean, and put it away someplace safe where it's not going to get damaged. Now we're going to break out our staking set, and we have to grab a, uh, uh, the roller table remover tool. And what this does is it allows us to insert the balance wheel into that, leaving the roller table setting on top of the teeth that's uh, on the top of that, just like so. And here you can see I'm inserting it into the uh, remover tool, and... The balance wheel frame, or the uh, part that goes from north to south in this particular photo, and is in, underneath the forks of the roller table remover, and the roller table is sitting on top, holding the entire balance up. And we have enough room under that, so when I tap on it, it's going to fall without doing any damage. Now I'll grab a stake that has a hole in it, the size of our pinion on our balance staff. And this allows us to push on the outside of our pinion so we don't damage the balance staff. You're going to line that up so that the pinhole on the stake gently goes around the pinion on the balance staff. And there's a good view of it right there. I'm going to zoom in here so we can see what it looks like. And we're going to make sure that it is completely surrounding that and hitting the top of the staff and not the pinion on the staff. Now I'll grab a little brass hammer and I'm going to gently tap on it. I'm holding the upper part of the stake with my fingers and I'm just kind of gently tapping very easily just to push that off. Once you get that through, the balance staff will fall, the roller table will come off, and you can put those pieces aside and get ready to go to the next step. 
So now's a good time to take a look at the roller table and you can see we've got a little bit of glue in here. Now, some people will use shellac like I do in this particular instance. Other people will use adhesives, which, you know, either way is fine. Um, I sometimes will use on more modern watches, a UV glue. Um, but the only problem with that is you don't get a lot of working time to set your jewel in place while the shellac or the glue is warm because um, the light will kind of solidify it. But you can do that with that. So to do this particular repair, you're going to also need a candle your pallet warmer or your roller table warmer. You're gonna need a lighter, obviously, to light the candle, and your assortment of roller jewels. First thing I need to do here is to insert the roller table into the roller table warmer, and those little tips on the warmer itself are kind of gouged out, so it holds the uh, roller table in very tightly kind of hard to explain, but there's like a little indented or recessed groove on those. And once you get it seated correctly, um, you can just take a look at it, make sure there's no more debris on it. And now we're going to grab the jewel and we're going to fit the right size jewel for this particular pallet fork and roller table. Now you can see in this and also in the diagram I did earlier that these, are partic these particular jewels are keyed. Sometimes they're round, um, but on watches made Primarily after the 1880s, you'll see that they're half round or moon shaped. And this is to hold the roller jewel in properly and allow a flat surface to contact the pallet fork. There's also that little indent in the roller table and that's to a stop over banking on most watches made after the 1870s. So once we get that jewel in place, we can move on to the next step, which is to get a little piece of shellac and we're gonna put it on the bottom. So that's what it looks like there once the jewel is sitting in place. And again, you can put the shellac on, melt it first, and then insert your, your jewel, whatever works good for you. So I've got the jewel in place. I've got my little piece of shellac here that I'm going to put on top of the underside of the roller table. And I'm gonna warm this up. And this process takes about a minute or two to get that roller table hot enough. The brass warmer um, heats through you know, like uh, in, induction, where it just travels through the brass and heats up your roller table. So I'll put the little piece of shellac on there. I probably use a little bit too much, but it's easy to clean off. So better to have too much than too little. And now I'm going to allow it to warm up. Again, this process takes about a minute. And I'm not going to even speed it up. I'm just going to let you watch the whole process so you can see exactly how long it takes. So while we're being bored to death by melting shellac, let me go over one of the reasons that watchmakers use shellac in the past. Shellac is a, is a really great uh, application for things like jewels when you're talking about pocket watches, especially, or even wrist watches, because it allows you to cement the jewel in place and the shellac will cool over a short enough period of time that allows you some working time to move a jewel if you have to and uh, make sure that it's seated in its correct position. These are things that you don't get with other adhesives. You can, like I said, use other things like UV glue or you know crystal cement on these, but the crystal cement takes hours to dry. The UV glue, once it's cured in place, it's pretty much cured in place and you're not gonna be able to move it around, reheat it. It's gonna have to be removed and redone. The shellac is kind of reusable. You can heat it up again and warm it up and move your jewel if you have to. Um, and it doesn't flake. Uh, typically, the whole piece will break off if the watch is dropped. Whereas, like, if you don't ever use super glue inside a watch, super glue flakes off and it'll get into the movement of the watch and actually cause problems. So, you, you know, shellac is a good alternative and UV cement is a good alternative, like crystal cement. Um, I see that used in newer watches these days. Um, again, you don't have the work time with a UV glue because once you UV cure it, it's cured. You can't, you can't reheat it up and remove it. It's just what it is. Once it's there, it's there. At least with shellac, you can kind of warm it up, move it around, remove some, add some, move that jewel like you see that I'm doing here, and uh, get it seated correctly. And, and like I said, you can go ahead and clean off some of that shellac if you want. I usually wait till it's a little cooler. Uh, the shellac will start to cool off and it cools down in about two minutes. But while it's warm and pliable, it's a good time to scrape off any excess. I'm going to use a hand blower here just to uh, 
cool it down a little bit faster and then I can do a test with this but uh, I, I'm pretty sure that I've done a decent job with this. Now I'm going to remove this roller table out of the tool and we're going to put that aside and I just use an aluminum cup tray to hold that in and uh, I'll let that cool down for about five or six minutes before I start working with it. That's all you really need to do to uh, deal with the shellac. And for the next step we have to assemble the complete balance again so I'm going to use another punch tool here. This, this is part of my staking set and we are going to uh, lay this onto our stake I can line it up, make sure that little piece falls in the hole and it is seated correctly. Next thing we're going to do is put our balance on there. And we're going to put it with the roller side of the balance face up because now we're going to attach the roller table. So gently grab your roller table and put it onto the balance staff. And just be careful how you line this up and try not to touch any of the pinions or uh, delicate parts of the balance. Now, this is a good time to line it up. Uh, there's no right or wrong way to align a roller jewel with your balance. Um, some people do it uh, lined up along the frame of the uh, balance wheel, some, pe some people don't. So whatever works for you, just have to remember where that roller jewel is and where it's pointing from its direction. So now I'm gonna grab the roller punch or the roller stake from my staking set and you can see this has a hole in it as well as a groove so that the roller jewel sits within that groove that way you won't do any damage to that and now I'm going to use my brass hammer and just gently tap that down onto the balance staff and again you're going to be very careful you're not applying a lot of pressure these are just pressure fit parts and we just need to seat them well to to kind of you'll kind of hear in the tapping when it hits bottom and then you just don't want to go any farther you don't want to put any more pressure on that once it's seated correctly you can pull the balance off of the stake set and take a look at it and make sure that it's located properly that it's seated all the way down and if it needs to be adjusted make any adjustments now now i'll grab the roller stake from uh, my staking set and we're going to put that into our staking frame and you can see that it has a groove on the bottom and what that does is it allows you to seat the balance staff roller table down jewel down into that little groove so that you're not going to do any damage the purpose of this is to actually uh, the next step is to put the hairspring back in so i'm going to put the balance staff in the hole in the center of that punch and then the jewel should fit right into that groove and here's a better shot of it if you look closely and there it is So now that the balance wheel is sitting on the stake set, the roller table down, we can align and install our hairspring. So be very careful, a hairspring is one of the most delicate parts of a watch. So we're gonna grab it by its collet and we're going to insert it in there. Now I've pre-aligned this. You can see I'm using a hole punch to actually, I'm gonna put pressure on there. I'm not gonna use a hammer, I'm just gonna use my fingers to push down this punch. We're going to center it onto the top or the upper side of the balance wheel and then we're going to push down very gently so as not to touch any of the delicate parts on the balance staff. And again, once we're done, we're just going to take a look at the complete balance before we attach it to the balance cock and make sure that everything is lined up and ready to go. And if it has to be clean, this is a good time to re-clean your balance uh, very gently and get it ready to insert into the watch. Now I have reassembled the watch at this point and I'm just going to show you here. I'm just testing the pallet fork to make sure that it springs back and forth on its own. I'm going to give this about a, maybe a third of a wind on the spring and you can see that's where the roller, or the roller jewel is going to contact the pallet fork in that little U-shaped groove. So now we're going to line that up with our movement and insert the balance and be careful here. You don't want to stretch out your hairspring you don't want to cause any damage so just get that centered into the balance jewel once it's centered you're going to lay down the balance cock and its two little posts and make sure again that the hairspring isn't touching anything and just screw it back into place once you've made sure that it's going to work right once you've done that you've completed this job the roller jewel is not a very difficult job to do but because the parts are so very small you're going to want to use some magnification i would suggest two and a half x 
um, if, if you want to and just make sure that it works. Guys, listen, I hope you like this video. I hope it helps you in your next repair. If you did like it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing to my channel as it helps the algorithm and my channel grow. I appreciate all of you watching my stuff. And uh, if you have any requests, please put them in the comment section below. Thanks and have a great day.